So the title of my thesis was How Can Motivational, Motivational Interviewing Be Implemented in Schools to Address Pupil Disaffection? Examining the context and implementation of a school-based MI programme in a London local authority. So some key context to my study. Um, I had an interest from year one in pupil disaffection. So this is conceptualised in psychology as an integrated set of negative attitudes, beliefs and behaviours with respect to school life generally and to academic demands in particular. Um, so it's best characterised as an emotional state, although it can have behavioural manifestations. Um, and because it's quite multifaceted in this presentation, it's quite difficult to estimate the number of m numbers in our uh, young populations but we can use uh, figures from exclusion, for example, to give us some indication. We know that those figures are high and rising, but because um, disaffection can manifest, I suppose, in more quiet forms in schools, for example, in like passivity in the classroom that might not be recognised by teachers as problematic, it's likely actually that the figures for disaffection are much higher than um, that of exclusion would suggest. Um, and the reason this is a concern for educators and EPs is because disaffection is associated with, with the risk of adverse outcomes in the short term for educational outcomes, for example, and in the longer term across um, social, economic and health domains for individuals who experience it. And we know from the research that there are envir environmental kind of factors in the causes of disaffection. Um, one key factor being uh, the quality of relationships between um, teachers or school staff and pupils. Um, and I found in my experience as a trainee, anecdotally, that um, when pupils were experiencing disaffection, often um, a, 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 there would be a suggestion or a recommendation for them to have a trusted or key person in school or a mentor um, who would often be a member of school support staff. Um, we know that school support staff are a really substantial proportion of the educational workforce and they, um, they have one-to-one -one pastoral work with pupils as a key aspect of their deployment. Um, but we also know that uh, they often, often lack training uh, to faci faci facilitate their roles, which means that um, in our schools often the most vulnerable pu uh, pupils are supported by staff who have the least training. Um, so the final concept, key to my research, was that of motivational interviewing. So this is a person-centred, really autonomy supportive counselling approach which aims to help clients overcome ambivalence around change. And we know um, from the research that this has trans been transferred into use with uh, young populations, with children and adolescents. And there's a small body of evidence that suggests its promise as an approach to addressing pupil disaffection. Um, however, the existing research uh, is primarily looking at interventions that have been facilitated by um, expert facilitators like EPs and psychologists and counsellors. Um, there's really uh, very little known about what happens when school staff attempt to implement it in their practice following training. So the REACH coaching programme um, was the school-based motivational interviewing programme that I looked at, which uh, was facilitated by an EPS in a London local authority. It ran from June to October 2022. It comprised two full training days on MI principles and practices. Uh, so MI is a real um, skills-based approach, which has key communication techniques associated with it. So there was teaching on that. And there was also two reflection days, which were comprised of supervision and focus groups. Um, after the period of training, um, which uh, took place over a few months, um, the uh, staff or coaches, as they were, took part, um, were expected to go into their settings to identify people experiencing disaffection and deliver an MI-based intervention with them. Um, so the, the uh, staff that took part were from secondary settings and some specialist settings from across the borough. Um, I focused on the experiences of support staff who took part and they comprised the majority of um, the coaches who participated. So the aims of my research were first and foremost to look at the needs uh, within the local authority from the perspective of VPs working there. Uh, which fed into my first research question. So that was exploring needs in the schools. And then my second aim was to look at the implementation and document the implementation of a programme that was devised by EPs to meet this need in uh, the local authority. Um, 
And the ultimate aim of this was to look at how the program could be could be uh, maximised, the impact could be maximised and could be sustained in the local authority and beyond to others. And the reason I looked at implementation is because we know from education and SBMI research that variability across domains of implementation um, really affects the degree to which interventions achieve desired outcomes. And so my second, third and fourth research questions looked at different domains of implementation and um, to meet uh, gaps in the SBMI literature I looked at implementation in the context of uh, the program's feasibility so what were the facilitators and barriers that coaches experienced setting it up and using it and um, their engagement with it and um, so did they like using it did they think that pupils uh, engaged with it uh, we know this is really important because um, a approach might be associated with positive outcomes but if the staff using it aren't really sort of engaged with it and don't like it very much, they're unlikely to sustain it um, in practice. And I also looked at it from the perspective of um, adaptation and fidelity. So following training, did the staff adhere to the approach closely? Did they use uh, the techniques correctly? And did they adapt the programme or um, stick to the, the intervention as it was advised? So the methodology was a qualitative multi-phase design informed by EF guidance on implementation and process evaluations. So these are used by the EF to look at what new programs look like when they're used in settings and the conditions are, that are required to make sure that they're delivered successfully. I collected data at multiple time points to allow progressive focus on different implementation phases. Uh, so my first phase explored the need for the program or needs within the local authority schools. Uh, to do that, I use semi-structured interviews with EPs, six in total. Um, after conducting the interviews, um, the program was devised and rolled out, and the following phases uh, looked at coach perspectives, uh, so those taking part in the training program. Uh, so phase two looked at, um, through focus groups at two time points, uh, their experiences of initially installing the intervention or the approach in their schools and initially implementing it. So how were they finding set it, setting it up? Uh, what did they need to make implementation better? Um, I also plan to do observations for this phase to examine fidelity in sessions and to go into some schools and look at those. But unfortunately, due to recruitment issues, that wasn't possible in the end. Um, finally, for phase three, I did some one-to-one -one semi-structured interviews with uh, coaches that took part, seven of them, and that was to get really in-depth data on their uh, experiences. And that took place um, about six weeks after the training programme had completed, uh, after a period in which they had been uh, asked to set up the in uh, intervention. So it was really their reflections, um, how they thought uh, pupils had responded, and crucially, did they intend to sustain it um, thereafter. Um, so I applied thematic analysis to my data across all of the phases. Um, there was three themes for brevity today, I've kind of boiled this down to key findings. Um, but from EP interviews, what was really clear was that uh, EPs identified that there was a real need for early intervention approaches for pupil disaffection. They recognised that when interventions were put in place, they were coming too late in the day when pupils were at the point of exclusion or that was already occurring and perhaps um, children were already about to be moved to a different school. Um, they found or experienced that available uh, interventions when they were being used were not specific to disaffection, they were too generic. Um, EPs mentioned uh, mentoring practices being used, this is what they saw in schools and they valued it as an approach but they saw that it often wasn't used or structured with evidence-based frameworks. Um, which was impacting on the degree to which those interventions were effective. Um, and they actually uh, identified that in their own advices and recommended recommendations for provision, often they would uh, remark on mentoring as an appropriate approach, but they themselves said that their recommendations could lack specificity because they weren't sure what was available to say to schools, you should use this approach to train staff and support that work. So this really identified a gap for evidence-based frameworks to shape what they saw as potentially very valuable support staff activities with this group of pupils. So this was where the, the context for the REACH programme came in. 
Across phase two and three, there were six themes. Again, I've boiled these down. Um, so coaches' experiences. Crucially, they were really, really engaged with the... Uh, they were really engaged with MI as a, an approach. And reflecting on their previous practice, they really felt like it enhanced the way they worked with young people. Um, partly because it really kind of dismantled the power dynamics that often define one-to-ones. Um, and that uh, ch children kind of commented that they felt in control of sessions. Um, partly due to this being a very autonomy supportive approach. And they found that uh, because of that, it really enhanced the quality of their relationships and was a great tool for people voice. And um, they also reported some positive outcomes that observed um, across academic achievement, attendance improving, um, the reports of effort improving in the classroom. Um, so across uh, the domain of responsiveness, that was really high. Um, in reports of how they used it, it became apparent that they'd used this approach as more of a style that they'd incorporated into their usual practice, which meant it had been used in conversations in isolation rooms, as part of mentoring work, in listening sessions, and it had been used more piecemeal as opposed to a standalone intervention. In fact, only one coach used it as that standalone discrete intervention. Um, and as well as that, in coach reports, there was some evidence of non-MI adherent practice. So they were lapsing into previous ways of working, um, for example, guiding and advising on uh, what goals should be and how they should go about achieving them. Um, and that was something that's important to address um, for developers to think about because we know that uh, using those communication skills correctly is associated with um, promoting behaviour change. Um, some barriers that they identified to using the approach and setting up interventions. Some were on setting levels, so they remarked that um, they often lacked support from their managers and wider staff, um, and they hadn't had time timetable for them to uh, plan and deliver the sessions, which had, in some cases, led to it being delivered piecemeal and not a standalone intervention. Um, there were also barriers that they identified on uh, personal levels. So uh, some commented that it felt quite unnatural um, because it kind of really transformed the way they communicated with young people. And because it was new to them, it felt a bit um, uncomfortable sometimes. So it seemed like their own confidence was affecting their competence to use the approach. Um, remarks on age propriety. So they uh, reflected that they felt... This really met a need for an SEMH intervention for key stage four pupils, but they thought that key stage three pupils were too young um, for MI as a talking approach. And uh, this was important to bear in mind because we know that trajectories for disaffection start um, in the early years of secondary school, and that contrasted with what the EPs had remarked upon regarding the need for an early intervention approach. So that was something that really needed to be addressed going forward. Yes? Yeah, you're at 13 minutes. Okay, right. Implications, very quickly. So, um, I, uh, in terms of recommendations for the developers, we think, um, or the idea was that enrolment should be replaced by contracting to ensure it could be delivered as a standalone intervention. So, putting um, line management arrangements in place, ensuring coaches would have time to implement it properly. Um, a need to develop the programme content to promote coach MI com competence. So um, one recommendation there is for these of observations and reflection cycles. Uh, we know from the existing literature that this is a great way of promoting uh, uh, the use of MI with fidelity and also enhances confidence using the approach. And finally, it seemed that there was a need for the resources that coaches had been given to be adapted um, if to be age appropriate to ensure that the intervention could be ready to be used as a, a truly early intervention. Thank you very much.